बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद नेक्स्ट स्पीकर श्री बत हरी महताब जी थैंक यू चेयरमैन सर आई मे बी अलाउड टू चेंज माय सीट टू स्पीक फ्रॉम दिस यस आई हैव बीन स्टडिंग बजट सिंस 1980 एंड इट्स बीन more than 40 years now commenting on budget in all india radio writing on budget in the newspapers which i still do there are basically six constitutional mandates that need to be looked into one is the socio economic justice for all that is there in the preamble second is minimization of economic inequality that is article 382 distribution of resources to subserve common good that is article 39b avoid concentration of wealth that is article 39 early childhood care and education article 45 and raise level of nutrition that is article 47 these are the four six major issues on which normally during last 20 25 years we have been deliberating especially relating to the social sector of course we also deliberate how much money has been given to defense how much money is there for maintaining law and order in the ministry of home affairs but basically in a developing nation the greater stress is on social development at the outset i would uh, thank the finance minister that she deserves compliments for presenting a budget that looks into the future while keeping a close eye on the ground presented amid a challenging economic environment the budget has laid out a road map for supporting growth and putting in building blocks for india's long term development we see a clear intent the right for proposals and matching allocations in many areas that would contribute to making india a modern developed and an inclusive nation one of the most outstanding features of the budget is the emphasis on capital expenditure the finance minister has signaled 35.4% hike in the central government's capital expenditure plan to rupees 7.5 lakh crores in the financial year 22-23 integrated planning and execution can considerably increase domestic productivity and export competitiveness the focus of budget is on technology and infrastructure led growth which will have positive impact proposed technology led development in health and education will help the country to a large extent during this pandemic situation the capital expenditure boost in itself will generate millions of jobs directly and indirectly through its multiplier effect on other sectors the unprecedented helping hand to states for their capital expenditure through provisions of rupees 1 lakh crore of rupees of interest free 50 year loan addition to their normal borrowing ceiling is a special feature the credit guarantee scheme for msmes is being revamped to provide rupees 2 lakh crore of new lending additional credit to hospitality tourism and related pandemic affected sectors is being provided through the highly successful emergency credit line guarantee scheme the outlay for the pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana has been increased by 27% so what are the hits of the budget i have just narrated some few no surrender in capex and a significantly higher allocation for roads and railways and if i if i am correct i may say here since last including this budget since last 6 years capital outlay has been fully spent which was not happening earlier continued support to smes thrust on pil schemes to generate employment and exports digitization of education and economy fiscal consolidation stabilization 
allocation for water and housing, no further doles to farmers, no further capital infusion to public sector banks. So far, so good. The sectoral allocation, I would say, is slashed in critical sectors like agriculture and farmers' welfare, higher education, rural development, and women and child development. This could hamper growth. Reduction in MGNREGA is not going to help the poor. It may be in, in different supplementary budget, it may be enhanced. But in this budget, there is some apprehension. There is no provision made for the urban poor. Mr. Rangarajan, famous economist of our country, had proposed an urban MGNREGA. We are finding large number of urban poor who are bereft of any employment. Whether, and in this budget, I was hoping that in this budget we will hear something, but there is no mention about MGNREGA for the urban poor. No, nothing of that sort has been announced. It would have been better if the budget had focused more on issues affecting the common man, for example, inflation and unemployment. Here I would like to mention in para 28, there has been mention of in agriculture where inclusive development has been mentioned. For the first time, I, I, and I, I believe, for the first time, the finance minister has mentioned about procurement of food grains, of wheat and paddy. The estimated procurement of paddy in Kharif 21-22 will cover 12 lakh, 1208 lakh metric tons of wheat and paddy from hundreds 63 lakh farmers and 2.3 lakh crore will be direct payment of MSP value to their accounts. I think for the first time in a budget, MSP word is being used. That's a good thing. But we in Odisha are at tremendous loss because already we are reeling through number of other issues relating to procurement by Food Corporation of India. Already there are serious issues of offtake by FCI leading to dislocation in paddy procurement. Further, reduction of food subsidy under NFSA will put farmers in serious trouble. This needs to be reconsidered. I would mention here the paddy procurement by state government, state agency in Odisha is milled to rice through private millers. And the rice so milled is distributed under National Food Security Act, other welfare schemes of government of India, and our own state food security scheme. As per MOU, the surplus stock of rice, which is in excess of allocation in favor of state under targeted public distribution system and other welfare schemes are handed over to FCI. In the ensuing KMS 21-22, uh, out of 52 lakh metric ton of estimated procurement of rice, Odisha's own consumption will be 30 lakh metric tons under NFSA and SFSS. And other welfare schemes, including four months of PMGKAY, and then state is likely to have a surplus of 22 lakh metric tons of rice. FCI totally refused to receive any parboiled rice in the current year. Target has been issued to lift after a lot of persuasion, the minister said, directed the Department, uh, FCI that lift at least 5 lakh metric tons. But till date, hardly, I would say, hardly 5,593, hardly, they said, despite all our efforts, evacuation of fortified parboiled rice against the government of India target of 5 lakh metric ton is 5,593 tons. This much they have only lifted. And that too, there is no sign of improvement in delivering at FCI depot. Every day, there have been bottlenecks created right from the purchase officer at FCI depot level to the level of GM, FCI at state level. And it is every day, law and order situation is being created. I'm taking the advantage while discussing on the budget, but this is what we are facing in our state every day and repeated request by the state government. 
repeated request by honorable members of both Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha. And fueled by political opposition. And this is being fueled by political opposition. This is the state of affairs. And we have been selling 52 lakh metric tons of rice every year. Odisha government purchases it, gives it, uh, uh, converts it to rice, and gives it to FCI. And Odisha keeps 30 lakh metric tons for its consumption as per the direction of the union government. That's the memorandum of understanding that we have. And this is the position, I don't know why, for last six, eight months, this problem has been repeatedly created. Telangana also is, is facing the same, the same problem. Sir, uh, madam, expectations, I would say, there is another, I would come to the next point. Cooperative societies have got some relief for the first time in this budget from tax in the budget. But individuals and partnership firms continue to be taxed at double the rates of manufacturing companies. This needs to be looked into. Of course, when we'll be discussing on the finance bill, uh, I will be coming to those aspects in greater detail. Madam, uh, millet has been first time mentioned in this budget. Odisha had a Odisha millet mission. We had started since last year. And it has become a game changer in promoting nutritional security and augmenting farmers' income, especially in southern part of Odisha. I am uh, one would be happy that government of India has recognized the importance of millet in the union budget. In the context of declaring 2023 as International Year of Millets by United Nations, increased allocation uh, under Jal Jeevan Mission, PMAY, are, 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 are welcome steps. However, people of Odisha are shocked that the genuine demand of Odisha on rural housing are neglected while the same is considered for other states. I hope the union government would rectify this injustice being meted out to the poor and the tribal people of Odisha by not sanctioning the houses. Odisha is the only state, madam, in the country which is more frequently affected by natural calamities and disasters. And our repeated demand for a special consideration in this regard has not been addressed in this budget. Expectations of the middle class regarding lower petrol prices increased standard deduction, increased 80C limit, et cetera, have been belied. Budget gives investment, digitization, a push, but cold shoulders in formal sector. There is a reduction in subsidy for fertilizer and food by around 35,000 crores and 80,000 crores respectively. That means the government will be withdrawing the free food program which was in force in financial year 2021 and financial year 2022. The excise collection on petrol has shown a varying trend. In financial year 21, it was 3.9 lakh crores and was targeted at 3.35 lakh crores in 21-22, in financial year 22. The revised number comes in at 3.94 lakh crores, while the budget amount for financial year 23 is 3.35 lakh crores. What does this signify? Is this reduction because of rupees 10 per liter or there could be some more cuts? I think we would hear from the finance minister. The government has also rolled back the outlays on PM Kishan and MG NREGA. It may be assumed that if required, the government could always raise the outlays of Narega food and fertilizer subsidy. So the misses, I would say, the misses are allocation priority, 6% versus 3% in education, 3% versus 1.3% in health, rural employment, nutrition, given a very short shrift. Distributive of justice, as I had mentioned, it is there in the Constitution. No tax cut to middle class for propelling consumption or tax increase for super rich. Micro enterprises, marginal farmers, middle class, all are overlooked. This will have serious impact on consumption. Debt filled rather than tax propelled. 
Madam, I would like to draw the attention of this house about government borrowing that is done to cover the deficit. Around 4.25 lakh crores has been drawn from the small savings fund, that is NSSF, for the year 2023. Interestingly, for the three-year period, that is 2021 to 22-23, the average withdrawal has been 5 lakh crores of rupees, which is very large. Finance Minister has bet significantly ramping up capital expenditure to start a virtuous circle of growth. The strategy has obviously benefits its normal time, uh, will, will benefit in normal times, but our economy is still COVID scared. Demand is weak and capital assets have a long gestation period. There was near unanimity that the budget must signal a much higher level of health care spending to not just set right historical deficiencies, but also address the glaring deficit in health care in public health care that the COVID-19 pandemic has revealed. It is important to remember that India's health care sector was severely deficient even before the pandemic came. Bangladesh, for example, is poorer than India, but has a higher life expectancy. It seems no lesson has been learned from the pandemic. Budget has little by way of building people's silence. Madam, I'll explain on two aspects. There are a number of, will be, of course, uh, in, in month of March, we'll be discussing about demand for grants of respective ministries. But here I would like to mention on two, two specific uh, departments. One is education, another is health. The increasing level of cess and surcharge is shrinking the mandated transfers of share tax due to the states. More than 20% of the urban taxes, uh, of the union taxes, are proposed to be collected through levy and cess and surcharges, which is against the spirit of, most often uh, quoted uh, word is cooperative federalism. The cess and surcharge is not being shared to the states. It is, it is being distributed by the union government, of course, for the benefit of the people. But I would like, I, I, I would come to the Education says. This was introduced in 2004 and 5. At that time, even without the cess, the education outlay was 2.3% of the government's total expenditure. The present allocation of rupees 1.04 lakh crore in budget 22-23 amounts to 2.6% of the total expenditure. This seems like an improvement, but it includes rupees 62,000 crores coming from education says. What was the idea when says was improved? What was the idea? The idea was that other than this 2.4% that would come from the general budget, this says will be an addition. But what has happened? You have just appropriated that. Okay. Similarly, the health says was introduced in 2018 to improve access to health care, public health care. Yes, the last point. In, in 2018, in 2018, without Sir. any cess, the allocation to health was 2.2% of total budget expenditure. In the current budget allocation of 2.2% of total expenditure would have been over 88,000 crores. However, the total allocation is just 83,000 crores, including the cess funded portion. If the cess funded part is excluded, the allocation would fall to just 62,441 crore, or 1.6% of total expenditure, which is a shortfall of 25,270 okay. crore. Instead of using the cess to enhance existing spending, the government has used it to steadily cut down budgetary support for two important social sectors of health education. Please finish. Sir, uh, madam, the concluding remarks I have Overall, I would say, the budget has laid down the intent of the government to focus on the long term and create the right ecosystem for the overall development of the economy. It is now important that all stakeholders, and all means both private sector in a greater way, must align themselves and public 
with the government's vision, then only we can see a better nation. Thank you. Thank you. Sri Ram Shiromani Verma ji.